Hello, this is Rudy Giuliani, and I'm back with another episode of Rudy's Common Sense. Today's episode is going to be on maybe a question I never thought I'd ask the American people. In fact, I never thought I would. But in order to do that question, I really need your feedback, your help. I talk to people all over the country. I try to make a, 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 a effort to do that. But of course, I don't talk to everyone. And I'd like to talk to you because you listen and you ob obviously agree or you don't. And I'd like to know both. So we've opened up a part of our website, which is RudyGiulianiCS.com. It's all it's right, right there. Rudy, R-U-D-Y, G-I-U-L-I-A-N-I, CS for common sense, dot com. Hit that, you get on. We have now a special segment for you to put your comments in. Hopefully relevant ones, but you know, if you want to raise other subjects, God bless you. The one I'm going to raise today is something that happened. I'm going to show you how it happened. I was reading the Wall Street Journal. And I've been reading about this for quite some time, and I've been doing some research on it for quite some time. And that is the, 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 the uh, phenomenon that the Navy of China is passing the Navy of the United States. And uh, at first, when I read this, maybe about a year ago, I found it uh, almost like I didn't want to believe it. And now the, the, the Wall Street Journal has a rather documented article that says that um, the Navy of the United States is uh, this in this uh, fiscal year going to add five more ships. See, this is the usual uh, lying, conniving, anti-American practice of the Biden administration and the Democrats who serve him. You see, but they're going to do away with something like eight or 10 ships. So the Navy is going to come down. I think, I think, and I'll have to go back to the article, but I think we'll be at about 280. China, I believe, already has more ships than we have. By the year 2030, which is around the corner, they will have almost double the number of ships that we have. Oh, but our uh, star people, the ones who get the stars here, and I only say that um, derogatorily because half of them are the greatest heroes we ever had, fought, died for us, and the other half, or maybe less, spent most of their time kissing you-know-what. We've had some great generals in the history of this country, the greatest. And we, we've had some of the most awful ass, you know what, in the history of the world. And Obama seems to attract only one kind because, I mean, honestly, who would work for a demented man? So I looked at that and I said, well, where are we going? And where we're going is to a permanent fix of that situation on the theory that our half Navy, will be um, sophisticated enough so that we'll be able to take on their double the size Navy. This, of course, fails to realize they have stolen all of our intellectual property. So there's not much reason why their ship shouldn't be almost as good as ours. And a two to one advantage is pretty damn big. Particularly if you have to patrol, protect two oceans, they only have to do one. So we're on our way to conceding the seas of the Pacific to China. Biden is. The Democrats around him, the left wingers. I don't know, they break down into all kinds of categories, right? Just silly, stupid, uh, Ivy League educated pinheads. Um, just silly people who have been Democrats all their lives and can't work their way out of it. People have a certain amount of animosity to the United States, and this is the way to express it. Because you can't express it on the Republican side. We love the United States. You might as well be a Democrat if you hate it. The people with ideologies which range from liberal to moderate socialist to advanced socialist, which is really communism, to communism, to anarchists like George Soros. And they embrace this. 
This is, this is where they wanted us to go for years, you know, one world. That's Soros, one world. Soros was once quoted as saying American nationalism is one of the greatest dangers in the world. Uh, you don't belong here, if that's what you think, really. I mean, if you hate us that much, what the hell are you trying to undermine us for? Right? Because you hate us. But then I, I started thinking about that, and I started thinking back on, on the last couple of years, and, and people tell me this, and I resist it. I have a, you might find it hard to believe I have a naive tendency. I can't believe that Americans would be working against the United States. But I could interpret the actions of the Biden administration as deliberately working against the best interests of the United States and trying to undermine the form of government we have and the values that we have. Maybe I'm wrong. I have a hard time embracing it, but I'm going to give it to you as a theory. I'm going to ask you to comment on it. Then I'm going to go back in a week or two over your comments and discuss it. Because we really have to get to the heart of this. I mean, it, 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 there's no doubt our next election could mean the difference between the free country that we've loved and cared about and the one that we don't have right now. But it could mean more than that if I'm right about my intuition, and I hope I'm not. But I want to see what you think. Okay? So here's here here are, here are a couple. I'm not going to give you all. I don't know. I can remember all. Probably when I finish the podcast, I'll remember five more. I promise I won't come back on and do it. Just, just give you the best 15 or so that I remember, okay? So are, are they working for the other side? Are they just misguided liberals who have always been kind of unrealistic about foreign policies, have more often than not get, got us into wars they couldn't figure their way out of, and have killed an awful lot of American people, and have domestically turned us into a crime country? That's a pretty bad record. But the question is, are they doing it for, a, for, for, for an ulterior motive? So we'll become part of communism or George Soros's one world or who knows what else or Obama's kingdom. Well, here's the first step that would say you hate America if you're Joe Biden. He ended the Keystone Pipeline. He made Russia much more powerful. And he did nothing for climate change because the, whatever oil and gas we were going to get from there, we're just going to get from somewhere else. So that gas and that oil gets processed and all that goes up to the precious environment. If human activity really does affect the environment, and I ask you to consult your common sense and take a look at the universe we live in and the size of it and the size of us and say, just how scary is that really? But in any event, we did nothing for it by getting rid of the keystone. We just moved the money. We moved the money from Canada and the US to, to Russia. So Vladimir must have said, thank you, Joe. That was nice of you to make me richer. I'm having real problems because your predecessor, Trump, who you guys falsely claimed I was colluding with, including you, Joe, you were part of that big lie that the American people <clears throat> swallowed. But thank you, Joe. You make a little money now. Then he ended in Paris fossil fuels. We're not going to have fossil fuels. We're going to have electric cars. Oh, Joe, isn't that smart? And what do they run on, Joe? They run on electricity. Where does electricity come from? I don't want to get too scientific because I'm going to push this guy beyond his 94 IQ. If it even exists at 94 anymore. But we get it from fossil fuels. We burn them. In fact, everyone who studied this has said if we're going to actually go to electric vehicles, I don't know. We're going to, our need for electricity is going to go. I can't remember. Is it five times, 10 times? But the amount of um, all that damage that we're going to do to this universe in which we're just a little pinprick, if we do damage to the universe, is going to be worse. 
with electric. Elon Musk, don't get mad at me. It's going to be worse if we do just electric cars. So we're getting rid of the Keystone Pipeline. We're going to buy uh, the stuff from Russia, which we started doing. It's going to be the same uh, stuff going up that destroys the world. It was supposed to be gone in 2010, according to Gore. And then we're going to do all kinds of electric cars, even without drivers, so they can be like bumper cars. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Be good for the trial lawyers. They're all, I mean, the guys who do the phony um, accident cases. Democrats get their vote all the time. Um, so they're going to be driving around like that. And it's going to take as much, will take more contribution of uh, fossil fuels to the big giant environment that I don't think we can affect anyway than if the U.S. did. Oh, by the way, we do it cleaner, but who thinks about that? Think your homeowner's insurance covers home title fraud? <laughs> Think again. And neither does your common identity theft program. The FBI calls home title fraud one of the fastest growing crimes, which is why you need to go to HomeTitleLock.com. America's in minutes, a criminal can find and forge himself onto the deed to Jeff home and took out loans. Jeff didn't have home title lock then. He does not. Home is protected. Serve. Oh, and then he got rid of energy independence to give them permission for the Russian pipeline. Trump withheld it for four years. Eastern Europe was in favor. Everybody was in favor of it, but, but Germany was going to make money on it and they're half working with the Russians forever. The decisions you made about Afghanistan, which you could only make if you hate the United States. Forget Joe Biden for a moment, my good friends. Just consider the following common sense proposition. There are large numbers of Americans that are trapped in a country that has four major terrorist groups that want to destroy Israel and kill Americans. That's their raison d'etre. We're going to pull out of that country. You got a choice. Should we pull out the troops first and leave the civilians to be helped by the terrorists who hate them? Or should we pull out the civilians first while the troops are there to protect them with an air base to help them? Which, which way would you do it if America came first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or anywhere on a scale of recognition? Of course, you would take, you take the civilians out first with the protection of the United States, Marines, Navy, Air Force, Bagram Air Force Base. But you do the following. You, you take the soldiers out first and let the civilians fend for themselves. And when it's too late, you send the soldiers back and you get them killed too. 13 of them that didn't have to die, Joe. Their families know it, Joe. Your conscience knows it. God knows it. Are you working for the other side? Are you really? I don't know. Hard to... Looks that way. Now, we're going to take up one other thing about Bagram Air Base that really shakes the hell out of me about you. I'm going to put up a photo I put up very often during these podcasts. I wonder if you've ever looked at it. I wonder if you'd remember it if you did. It shows you that the Bagram Air Force Base, which is modernized and fully equipped, which could have been used to safely evacuate all these people. It's, got, uh, it's 400 miles from China. It's 500 miles from Iran. It's a hell of a striking place for China and Iran if they should ever hit us. Give us a great advantage. Time is everything in nuclear defense, although you guys don't believe in nuclear defense because you made fun of Ronald Reagan over that. Not long ago, Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow, and his team fit me for my very own MyPillow. 
They also introduced me to their wide assortment of other incredible products at Guarantee. Enter promo code RUDY for these great specials. That's MyPillow.com and use the promo code RUDY. I, I don't get not backing up the MIGs. That Poland wanted to give him MIGs and you won't give him American airplanes. And re- What's going to happen? Putin's going to shoot at you? And then how does that explain you're getting up in front of the, was the 82nd Airborne and saying, you know, you're going to be run over, you're going to see children run over by tanks and you're going to, you're telling them they're going into Ukraine and for two months, you're telling them they're not going into Ukraine. These guys had to be really confused what was going to happen the next day. I mean, what was exa- was that a change in position or is that your Alzheimer's or dementia? What is it? How do you forget uh, four months of we're not going in and then telling them they're going in? And then how do you forget four months of not wanting to irritate Putin and then saying you want to depose him and then having to take it back and then having to sort of say it again and take it back again? So here's the question. We know the problems. I've left out half of them. I'd like you to let me know if you think that Joe Biden is deliberately doing this to hurt the United States of America because he's being manipulated by groups that would like to see our country disappear as a constitutional republic and become, a, become part of a kind of socialist one world. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing it as a question, yes or no. I'm doing it as write me a little something. Let me know, uh, Giuliani, I think you're out of your mind. Or Giuliani, you're on to something. Or I have this additional piece of information to help you or hurt you. This is so serious a question, I honestly could, I could be talked out of it. I obviously am leaning toward there's something to this. It's just too much. It's too much as a, as a prosecutor or a lawyer. A rational person, a person who's using use common sense. This is just too much. And I know too much. I know you, some of you think I got all overexcited about the election. I'm gonna tell you, you see how the hard drive is all proven to be true? Every single bit of it, one at a time, one at a time. I'm right. Same thing with the election, ladies. Just wait. Same thing. Be a lot of fighting before that, a lot of attempt to destroy me. Same thing. I don't lie. I tell the truth. Now I need help. Pure rational conclusion. He knew all about it. And he's part of turning America into a one world socialist country. My heart tells me that's very hard for an American. Could there be another explanation? And if there is, what is it so I can pursue it? Because one thing he is doing, whether it's on purpose, because he's such a demented man, he's hurting this country more than any president in our history. And if we don't stop it, it'll be irreparable. We got to stop it in 2022. Well, thank you very much for listening to this. Please respond to RudyGiulianiCS.com. And stay tuned to our other podcast. Hit subscribe. You'll be notified of them. And I do really need your responses. So please help me. Thank you.